Good day, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this <coughs> seventh day of uh, February, and it is uh, Tuesday, and today's topic is titled, The Drift. And before we get started on that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and hope and pray that he's your Lord and Savior today. Amen. All right, so we're going to start with today's scripture song for the seventh, and this is from Jonah 2, verse 7. <clears throat> and I encourage you to read the book of Jonah. It's a good book, and Brother James has a, a commentary on that book, and uh, that's a really good book. And then there's one by uh, uh, Brother Bennett Collins, and uh, so um, you can check out those books. Uh, one's on the Internet, and then, of course, you can go to uh, www.jameswnox.org to order the um, one by Brother James. Amen. So check out those books. All right, so we're going to start with the scripture song. And uh, yesterday when I started the Daily Strength, I started singing the uh, hymns from that book too. Uh, I know it would have been an extra hymn, but I should have started doing that. And maybe I'll uh, uh, start doing that today, sing uh, what the hymn from there, and then the hymn from the uh, song book. <clears throat> All right, so we'll probably end up doing two hymns and then the scripture song. So amen. All right, so uh Start that uh, here today, uh, Lord willing. And now it's time to get into the scripture song and Jonah 2 7. So press play and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. <clears throat> Jonah 2 7. When, when my, my soul, soul fainted within me, me I remembered the Lord, and, and my prayer came in unto thee, thee into, into thine holy temple. temple. This is Jonah speaking. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine home. probably wondering why I started smiling there. I was looking at tomorrow's scripture song, and it happens to be one of my favorite scripture songs, and you might know what it is. I'm not going to give it away right yet, but uh, you might know it um, you know, as soon as I mention it, so <clears throat> amen. All right, so uh, I'll tell you that at the end of the broadcast, what that one is for tomorrow, amen, but now it's time to get into today's topic, and we'll do the scripture songs from yesterday and today again. And now it's time for today's topic for February 7th, titled The Drift. And the passage is from 2 Timothy 2.19. And it says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, and amen it sure does, having this seal, that the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So the Lord knows who are his. If you're born again, saved. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So we should depart from sin and uh, never let it uh, dwell in us again. I mean, of course, it still dwells in the flesh and still temptation and stuff. And the flesh is still sinful, but we should never uh, give in to it. Amen. And depart from that iniquity. Second Timothy 2.19. And today's author is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So let me read you what he wrote on this topic of the drift. 
And he writes here, <clears throat> in the previous verses, one can easily see the concern from which one verse is derived. Paul names sin and does so with emphasis. Paul names names. Paul endorses study. Verse 15, he discourages uh, for, for uh, forging off into the prolific uh, fields of profane and uh, vanity filled uh, pal pal palaver uh, as that uh, just results in ungodliness. Verse 16, and even listening to the lies of some that attempt to destroy the lives of others is wrong. Verses 16 through 18, in spite of what men or ladies attempt to foist on Christ's church as truth uh, that isn't there, God helps us to stand and seek the old, worn-out path of holiness, godliness, and just plain old character. <clears throat> Amen. By the way, we desperately need revival in our churches. We need to enlist evangelists to come for several days or even weeks to stir some of us from drifting too far from the old paths, right? I agree, and uh, we just had a Bible conference here recently, but uh, we used to have Bible conference for almost a whole week, and then it kind of uh, went down to three days a week, and uh, a lot of um, our circles have done that, and I believe that if we had more time to uh, really have a um, Bible conference revival and let it last a week and maybe longer, we would really um, be able to get in tune with the Lord, right? But... Uh, I don't really think that three days is enough, and perhaps you don't, but uh, that's just me. And uh, because by the time you get started in, into it, it's over. And uh, those three days are over, whereas when you have a week or two weeks or a month or whatever of just uh, tent revival, tent meeting, over and over again, you tend to get uh, revived, amen. So, all right, so I wanted to put that out there. <clears throat> Okay, so again, by the way, we desperately need revival in our churches, I agree. We need to enlist evangelists to come for several days or even weeks to stir some of us from drifting too far from the old paths. Many churches and Christians are better uh, billboards for today's culture than they are lights proclaiming Christ and his life-changing power. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> God help us to recognize the drift in our culture and personal lives and aggressively oppose it. Amen. My recommendation, he says, Brother Tim Green says, would be to see which way the world is going and determinately uh, go the other way, right? Go against the tide. The carnal causeway of life will break and one will go crashing midst uh, the wild seas and cruel rocks of spiritual ruin. And he writes here in big, bold words, Pray, seek, turn, and humble the only way. See First Chronicles 7.14. May God send revival to you and yours. Amen. So let's go ahead and look at the Second Timothy passage first and read those uh, passages in. And we'll look at uh, Second Chronicles 7.14. So turn with me to Second uh, um, Timothy 2. And we'll read that. In its entirety. So Second Timothy two. All right. So Second Timothy chapter two, and uh, we'll just go ahead and read this whole thing for you. And uh, this is, starts in verse one. I'll read verse one. It says, chapter two, verse one, of Second Timothy, thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And that's Paul speaking uh, to Timothy, and uh, the rest of us. Um, amen. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. No man that warth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, right? That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully? The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. <clears throat> Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead, according to my gospel, 
wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound, and I underline that, it sure isn't, the word of God is not bound, and we tend to keep it bound, bound up, but we shouldn't, amen, therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Amen. Uh, of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and uh, Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Amen. And that was the verse uh, today, 19. Uh, so nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knowing them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee. So flee, that doesn't mean just walk casually, it means flee. from Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the name, or excuse me, that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Mm. So, good thing to take heed of all that stuff in Second Timothy chapter 2. Amen. Oh yeah, I wanted to read you uh, Second Chronicles 7.14 next. Second Chronicles 7.14. <clears throat> so let's go there. 7.14. And uh, let's see. 7.14 says... So there is context to this. Uh, let's go to verse 12. And of course this is talking to the nation of Israel. But we can um, apply this and make it practical in our lives. Uh, even so. Amen. Uh, but make sure we understand who it's written to. Alright. So 12. Verse uh, 12 of Second Chronicles 7. And it says here. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. And said unto him. I have heard thy prayer. And have chosen this place to myself for an house of uh, sacrifice if I shut up heaven that there be no rain or if I command the locusts to devour the land or if I send a pestilence among my people if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land so that was verse uh, 14 of course, um, we tend to want to use that verse and make it uh, our land, America. But it's talking about the nation of Israel and their land. And uh, amen. But still we can pray to the Lord and uh, seek his face. Amen. All right. So pray, seek, turn, and humble the only way. Amen. And uh, may God send revival to you and yours. <clears throat> All right. So that's the end of that. And good advice there. <clears throat> Amen. All right, now it's time to get into the uh, Daily Strength Volume 1 book. And we're continuing through the topic on compassion. And yesterday we covered what is compassion on Monday. And today we have Day 3, Tuesday. 
a compassionate Savior. And the passage here is from Hebrews 4.14 through 16. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but with, was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And that was a scripture song, I believe, a couple of days ago. Amen. So that is the passage there, a compassionate Savior. So now let's get into the introductory thoughts. And it says, The scripture plainly declares that God was compassionate prior to the coming of Christ. His coming to earth in a body of flesh simply confirmed that he is a compassionate Savior. The coming of Christ in the likeness of sinful flesh enabled God, the Son, to experience the temptations and struggles of mankind. And we have references are Romans 8.3 and Hebrews 5.8 are the references. And it says here, continuing on, his compassion on earth reveals that he suffered with man, but more importantly, he suffered for man. He took the sins of the world upon himself. And the references are Second Corinthians 5.21 and 1 Peter 2.24 and gave man his own righteousness, 2 Corinthians 5.21 again, and one of the greatest demonstrations of his compassion is the fact that God himself loved us enough to be housed in a body of flesh, Hebrews 10.5. <clears throat> and so let's go ahead and read those passages really quick. I wasn't going to do that, but uh, figured, well, why not? If it runs into overtime... <clears throat> Uh, so so be it. So well, let's see. Romans. Uh, so the first one was um, so the coming of Christ um, in the likeness of sinful flesh enabled God the Son um, to experience the temptation and struggles of mankind. And then we have the references here. Romans eight three is the first reference. So we'll read that really quick. So Romans eight three. <clears throat> All right. So Romans eight and verse three says. Uh, for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. <clears throat> and uh, I encourage you to read all of chapter 8. And then Hebrews 5, 8 is the next reference for this. So Hebrews 5, 8. So go there. <clears throat> Hebrews 5, 8 says, uh, Though... Uh, he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And of course, there's context to that in verse, uh, uh, or chapter 5. Amen. So uh, that's that. And then, uh, um, again, his uh, compassion, uh, compassion on earth reveals that he suffered with man. Uh, but more importantly, he suffered for man. He took the sins of the world upon himself. And uh, we have Second Corinthians 5.21 for that. So... 1 Corinthians 5.21 and read that really quick. 1 <clears throat> Corinthians 5 and 21. Alright, so 5.21 so wait a minute. Uh, oh, 2 Corinthians, sorry. 2 Corinthians. Sorry, I was in the wrong I got the wrong one here. 2 Corinthians 5.21 <clears throat> Alright, so uh, it says here for he had made himself to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. And then 1 Peter uh, 2.24 is the next uh, reference there. So you can look that up. And then again, uh, 2 uh, Corinthians 5.21 again. And then Hebrews 10.5. So we'll look at that really quick. Hebrews 10 and verse 5 says, uh, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hath thou preparest, prepared me. Amen. So that's the body that uh, was prepared for um, the Lord to come down into. <clears throat> Alright, so that's introductory thoughts. And now we have devotional thoughts. And the first is for children. But we can apply this to all of us. So the children says, um, How would you feel if someone took you out of your home and put you in a home where you were not loved by everyone and even uh, got mistreated, Jesus willingly did this for you. Amen. And then for everyone, 
Did Jesus learn anything by coming in a body of flesh? Uh, yeah, he sure did, because there are things he didn't know. Um, if so, what did he learn? He learned about how we uh, go through these uh, struggles in the flesh. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, what are some of his experiences while on earth that you might also have to endure? Hmm. So those are some questions to think about. And then God's compassion steams from his mercies. Lamentations 3.32 is the reference. Uh, since each of us is undeserving of his mercies, isn't it also likely that we are undeserving of his compassion? Hmm. Right? And then we have prayer thoughts. So these two prayer thoughts. Uh, first says, ask God to help you sacrifice for him like he sacrificed for you. Ask God to help you to understand. Uh, ask God to help you understand the benefits of His compassion. Amen. All right, and then today's uh, hymn is uh, "And Can It Be That I Should Gain?" Amen. So, uh, go ahead and sing that uh, hymn, and then get into the one in the uh, hymn book here. <clears throat> All right, so I'll try to sing this a cappella. So this is "And Can It Be That I Should Gain." And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain for me who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me. Tis mystery all, the immortal dies, who can explore his strange design. In vain for the firstborn seraph tries to sound the depths of love divine. Tis mercy all, let earth adore, let angel minds inquire no more. Tis mercy all, let earth adore, let angel minds inquire no more. He left his father's throne above, so free, so in infinite his grace. Emptied himself of all but love, and bled for Adam's helpless race. Tis mercy all. Immense and free. For oh, oh, oh my God, it found out me. Tis mercy, oh, immense and free. For oh, my God, it found out me. Long my imprisoned spirit lay. Fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thine eye diffused a quickening ray. I woke the dungeon flame with light. My chains fell off 
my heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. My chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. No condemnation now I dread, Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him, my living head, and clothed in righteousness divine. Bold I approach the eternal throne, and claim the crown through Christ my own. Bold I approach the eternal throne, and claim the crown through Christ my own. Amen. So that was that hymn from the uh, Daily uh, Strength book. And I uh, got this from the Great Hymns of the Faith book <clears throat> that we use at the church. Amen. All right. So that is it for today's um, uh, topic on compassion. So put that aside there. And I'll go ahead and do the hymn from the hymn book, the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. Amen. And so this is a less familiar one. And uh, see how it sounds uh, playing the instrumental sampling and see if it's easy to sing along with. And this one's titled, His Be the Victor's Name. Another one about the resurrection of Christ. Hymn 278 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this is written by Samuel W. Gandy, uh, who lived from 1780 to 1851. And then Henry J. Uh, Gauntlet, Gauntlet, 1805 to 1876. So press play and let you listen to this together with me. So here we go. here. So stanza 1 we have Psalm 22 11 and Isaiah 59 16. Stanza 2 is uh, Philippians 2 8 through 10 
and uh, uh, Genesis 3.15, and then stanza 3 is 2 Corinthians 5.21, and Hebrews 2.14, and then stanza 4 is 1 Corinthians 15.57, and Revelation 1.18. So no story for this hymn. So that's the end of that one. <clears throat> All right, put that aside, and we'll go ahead and do the scripture songs again, and then uh, wrap it up after that. So... <clears throat> All right, so we'll do yesterday's and then today's. Proverbs twenty four ten. If thou, thou faint, faint in the day of adversity, thy strength, strength is small. Is small. Right. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Thy strength is small. If thou faint in the day. Adversity, thy strength is small. Thy strength is small. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Thy strength is small. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Thy strength is small. That's right. Now we do Jonah 2 7. Jonah, Jonah speaking. 2 7. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. When my soul give you some uh, other books here that I have been uh, looking at and reading a few of these and this one I just got in the mail yesterday so I will recommend these books to you um, this one is uh, titled uh, advice to the young and of course uh, anybody can read this uh, young and old and uh, I've been reading this pretty good stuff by Noah Webster and it's advice to the young and uh, moral catechism from him and uh, so this is the cover to that and uh, so, where you can get a copy of this uh, book here is, um, let's see, you are going to get a copy of this book. It is available on this website, if I can get to it. Alright, so, um, it says, for additional copies of this book, or for, for information on other books and reprints, uh, it says, contact uh, Wall Builders, P.O. Box 397, uh, out. Aledo, A L E D O, Texas, 76008. And then their number is 817 441 6044. And then uh, www.wallbuilders.com. So that's how you can get a copy of that uh, little book there. It's from a bigger book. Um, no, no, Webster wrote some books there. So, amen. That's a good book. We're in the middle of reading that. And then this one I've been reading, it's uh, titled The Martyr of the Catacombs. And it's pretty good. And uh, it's titled A Tale of Ancient Rome. 
and so that's a good one there and then uh, yesterday I got this book uh, from Voice of the Martyrs it's Extreme Devotion and it says 360 five-day devotional stories of ancient to modern-day believers who sacrificed everything for Christ amen so sounds like a good book so that's the cover of it and uh, if you go on uh, to the website you can order it for eight dollars or you can make a, a donation to uh, to uh, Voice of the Martyrs and get it for um, a donation of more and so amen and of course I was looking through it and um, the only bad thing about it is it's not King James scripture so if I ever decide to read this on the broadcast I will make sure I have my Bible handy and give you the the uh, Word of God uh, the scripture from the King James Bible which is the Word of God not this uh, uh, modern version that they're using in the um, devotional so amen but uh, I want to read this eventually uh, sometime so amen so those are some books that you can check out so Martyr of the Catacombs uh, Noah Webster's Advice to the Young and Mortar, uh, Moral Catechism and then Extreme Devotion by Voice of the Martyrs and so amen all right, so that's some books there. Okay, so now we give you the um, scripture song for tomorrow, and then the uh, Baptist bread and the daily strength um, one, and then of course tomorrow uh, we'll be reading a couple of these stories from the Fight On book. Forgot to take it out. So tomorrow, since tomorrow is a church day, uh, Wednesday, and your church day might be on Thursday, so you might want to change the days. Uh, but we're just going to keep it the way it is in the book. And so tomorrow I'll read you um, some stories from Fight On and give you the scripture for tomorrow. And so let's see here. Um, let's see. So I'll read you this story um, from the Fight On book. And it's titled The Power of One Man. And across the um, page we have a, a quote by Edward E. Uh, Hale. So read you that quote. And then The Power of One Man. So that would be tomorrow's um, Fight On story. Amen. And of course, I said I'll do that every Sunday and Wednesday when there's um, no uh, no topic for the uh, daily strength. And so, amen. All right. And um, so that's that. And um, so that will be tomorrow's uh, uh, story there. And then, of course, the scripture song is going to be one that I told you earlier. It was one of my favorites. And uh, so this will be Psalm 42, 1 through 2. And I'm sure you already know which psalm it is, and it says, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Psalm 41, 42, 1-2. Amen. So that would be tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic for the Baptist bread will be titled, uh, The Flesh. Mm. So the flesh. And uh, so that'll be tomorrow's topic. So today we went over the drift and making sure that we don't drift away from the Lord and have revival. And so tomorrow will be about the flesh. Oh, so hope you come back for the, that one tomorrow. And the passage is James 4, 5. So that'll be the Baptist spread for tomorrow. And of course, tomorrow there is no um, no topic. It's just a scripture for tomorrow for the, um, for the um, topic on compassion. And it's uh, church night, day four. And it'll be Lamentations 3.31 through 32 will be the passage. And then, like I said, we'll read the um, Fight On story. Again, the title for the Fight On story will be The Power of One Man. And this will be um, pages 10 and 11 in the book. And so check that out. And then tomorrow's hymn will be uh, titled Cruel Foes, The Victor C. And this is another one about the resurrection of Christ. A spiritual song, 279 in the hymn book. Amen. So we'll find out about that song tomorrow, the hymn, Cru Cruel Foes, the Victor C. Amen. All right. And you can find a copy of that and then the Daily Strength uh, books on MelodyPublications.com. So that's where you can get those two uh, books there. And then, of course, the Scripture Song book and CDs are available online at www dailyscripturesongs.com that's Brother Dean and Sister Patty uh, Runyon's website Missionaries of Port Kaituma, Guyana so pray for them, amen and then I saw the other day that Brother Blake posted a new uh, video up on his uh, um, um, 
uh, missionary uh, uh, YouTube channel. So I'll probably post that up on my Facebook page um, later as I, after I watch it. So pray for Brother Blake and Sister Haley Muscat as they continue to get on those boats up there in Nor Norfolk, Virginia. Amen. And their uh, mission work up there, getting on all these boats and talking to all these different men from different countries that come over here. And you don't really need to go anywhere because you just get on the boat and speak to somebody from a different country. Amen. And witness to them that way. So praise the Lord. All right. And then the Baptist Spread uh, devotional book, you can get a subscription going by going online at www.baptistbread.com uh, or www.timgreenministries.org. And then the Fight On book, uh, you can look on the internet for that one. It's by uh, Samuel C. Gipp, Brother Gipp. And this is a collection of stories about those who have persevered through hardship and danger. Amen. All right, so that is it. Oh, yeah, I forgot. almost forgot that you might want to remember this in the Bible. Make sure you always get into the Word of God first. Amen. Try to encourage everybody to do that. Make sure that be the first book you get into each and every day. Read it, study it, let it sink into your heart, and pray to God that he would show you what he would want you to see. Amen. All right, well, that'll be it for today, so thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.